about it. Look at the design of this bridge. Now I've made up those riser blocks. I'm just kind of paring down that uh, one side. This is sort of what I started with. So there's a little slipper Brazilian rosewood glued to the existing foot so that I have control over the fit to the top and the height of the action. We need to take a minute and look at the geometry and the detail of this Brazilian rosewood bridge. I put those two pieces of Brazilian rosewood riser feet on the bottom and then carved them out to the shape of the original cavity on the underside of the bridge. The adjustments for action and intonation leave zero room for error. We don't have that luxury of your typical arch top bridge with the thumb wheel adjustment. This is a hundred percent contact to the soundboard and then that contact is uninterrupted right to the tip of the saddle where the strings make contact. So you have to get it right. Look at that asymmetrical form that kind of sweeps to the base side. It's just so graceful. This, here's a view from the other side. He didn't want those strings to sink in or bite in to that focal point on the tip of the bridge. Ultimately you should have a third of the underside diameter of the string should be in full contact with the bridge at the focal point to give you a good strong fundamental note. So next I'll wipe on a very light coat of smoked ebony stain to blend the Brazilian rosewood feet with the body of the original bridge. This translucent smoked ebony penetrating stain, it's given us the desired effect which was to blend the repair in with the original bridge. The Favino guitar is done now, but, but before this guitar leaves the shop, I just want to point out a couple of details. This is two millimeters from the top of the crown of the 12th fret to the underside of the string for the first string and that distance for the sixth string is three mil. All right, this is the final call. That bridge is now done. Those small little mustache tips, it looks like they've been off and then re-glued at some point. Not really crazy about that. Yeah, this side is kind of lifting a little bit too. So in summary, you can see that there's a whole pile of considerations that need to be taken into account when you're working on a guitar like this. There is no truss rod. Uh, you can't adjust that neck. Favino got the geometry on that fingerboard so that there is the perfect amount of relief from the nut to about the fifth or sixth fret and then it sweeps down uh, nice and straight towards the bridge. But this has never had a neck reset and quite frankly it will probably never need one. The combination of the right geometry and that extra thick ebony fingerboard, and of course those very light strings, all those factors combined add up to super longevity. Just wanted to give you a chance to hear this before it leaves. Just the camera microphone. Amazing voice. So here's some like cowboy chords. Not that you play like that normally with this guitar, but it's cheap as that thing. Jacques Favino. This is an ultra responsive guitar. The body is so light, man, it just wants to float to the ceiling. The neck weighs considerably more than the body. 
And that's why it's got all that snap. There's no reason why this guitar shouldn't be fully functional a hundred years from now. And that's it for the Jacques Favino signing out. Cheers.